guys, it's Brittany, and yes, <laughs> welcome back to my channel, first of all, and yes, it's still Christmas time, <laughs> even though Christmas was like, it's been almost a month since Christmas, we're, we're getting out there, but I'm obsessed, what is going on with my microphone? I'm just gonna leave it like that. I'm obsessed with <laughs> this backdrop or this background, this whole setup that I have. I'm obsessed with it. And we actually, so after this video, there's two more videos left with this set. And then we are moving on into the next set. Or I guess I'm actually leaving hell in a couple of days. And then I will be back home on earth and joining you guys during this pandemic. So, um, you know, getting ready to go back to that. But today's video, I decided this has been a very long overdue video. It's about my haunted doll known as Gem that you guys helped pick out for me. So I wanted to do an update video to let you guys know if anything weird has been going on with Gem. So let me just grab her for a second. This is my haunted doll Gem. So apparently there is a spirit, a nine year old child, female, that is attached to this doll. She was alive in 1948. She came from a very wealthy family. She's a nice spirit. And her previous owner was a psychic medium and said that she is very active. She likes to talk a lot and she will make her presence known. I made videos about Jen when I did my first pendulum session with her. I did a spirit box session in a haunted church. I will leave those videos up above and down below, of course, in the description box. So definitely check that out. Um, I did a Ouija board session with her. I filmed her in a haunted house so I put her up in the attic where there's a lot of activity there was this crazy light that went through Jonathan and me when we were playing this crazy paranormal game like I'm just gonna leave the playlist for Britty Ween 2020 it was that house had so much energy and so much going on so definitely check it out it's a really good investigation I was really proud of it so I've had gem since mid September and now it's mid January as I am filming this so what's the update? I don't think you guys are gonna really like what I'm gonna say. Nothing's really happened. Okay, let's just get into it for a second. But we are getting into it. Do I believe that she's haunted? I do. I definitely feel this vibe with her. Sometimes I feel like I'm being watched. I could be doing, doing my makeup and I feel kind of like, what the heck? You know, but then I'm like, wait, is it my spirit guides? Is it my entourage that's behind me? Or is it Gem? Have I, I haven't done any pendulum sessions with her. The last investigation that you guys have actually seen with her was the last time that I did it. I haven't done anything off camera. I have, just to be honest, and I've, you know, I've said this many times on my channel before, I think the biggest issue with me is whether I am purchasing a haunted item or I'm going to a haunted museum or something, you know, haunted location and I'm staying the night, I get overly excited. I'm not like the normal paranormal investigator where they're all like loaded up with their all their equipment, all this stuff and everything, wearing black and <laughs> I mean, I'm not throwing shade or anything. I mean, people just don't really think I am a ghost hunter when they see me. They think I'm some makeup girl or I'm into like fashion and stuff, which I am, but my main passion is the paranormal. But I can be into girly things as well. But where was I going at with that? The thing that's different, and I'm aware of this, is I am overly excited. And I feel like my issue is I'm always waiting for something paranormal to happen. And you know, they usually say when it happens when you least expect it, when you're not asking for it. That's usually when things happen and it's very similar to manifestation you guys know I'm very much into manifestation the law of assumption I backed away from the law of attraction I'm all about the law of assumption Neville Goddard hey like you know and when you kind of stop being in the lack when you completely cut out resistance and the lack of it not showing up that's when it shows up so in paranormal investigating, and this goes for any investigator out there, you're just always like this. You're always waiting. And with Jem, when I first got her, like I was just staring. I don't know what I was expecting. Well, actually I do know what I'm expecting. I'm always expecting the craziest stuff 
to happen. I'm expecting like a tornado to hit. Something just, and it's paranormal. It only hits me. It doesn't affect anybody else. Like, like <laughs> it doesn't affect anybody else. It only affects me. Like, it's just, I expect the craziest stuff. I expect to be thrown across the room. I expect to see a child coming out of, like, a child spirit literally coming out of the doll. And I don't think a lot of people think like that. And I think that is what my issue is. At least I admit it. And you guys know this is what I've admitted before. I think I'm overly excited. But that's why I am. And I'm not going to change that. And you know, I'm not saying every... Like I say too. Sorry. I'm just speaking from what's coming to my head. The paranormal is not on cue. You're not just like, hey, do this for me. And they do it. Sometimes they do. You know, you ask for knocking. You ask for a sign. And they will very much do it. You're talking through the spirit box. You hear voices coming through. They're answering your specific questions. Your EMF meter goes off. The paranormal music box goes off. You see shadows on the walls or something when you ask them to do something. I think it depends on the spirit. You know, I'm just so obsessed with getting the best evidence ever. Like, it's just, I, I just want the craziest stuff to happen. And you guys know that. Like, look at me at the Stanley Hotel. I freaking was laying on a staircase, laying on a staircase, waiting to be dragged. But there you go again, the waiting, that's lack. Going back to manifestation, I'm just sitting there waiting for it. I don't trust that it's gonna come. And when you don't trust, you're putting up a blockage. So I think with me and the paranormal, I'm just like, like, or I guess on my left side, even though I don't have a watch, but you know, oh my God, is this recording? Oh my God, I was gonna say, I've been talking and talking, and this is not recording. But you know, I'm looking at my watch, even though I don't have a watch, just pretend, I guess my phone, pretend I have my phone. Since I'm always checking the time in my videos, I don't know why. <laughs> but I'm just trying to say, I think that is my issue when I get a haunted doll. I own three haunted dolls and I always just go like this because I can't confirm it. I do though, like I'm looking at Gem right now, I do feel there's a presence, there's something and it's good, it's nothing, nothing bad. And you guys have said that, you know, she looks happy with me. And the owner says that she, or the old owner said that Jem wants to be with somebody who's, you know, fun and crazy and just a good home for her. And I'm definitely that person, I'm definitely. I treat haunted items like they're my children, you know? And that takes me to my next thing about purchasing haunted items online. Yes, there are a lot of scammers, I believe, for anything. They'll say it's this when really it's not. People sell haunted items and saying, you know, there, there's like a whole backstory that's not even true. They just want to sell it. And you got to be really careful with who you purchase from. And you don't really know, you know, I've purchased my three dolls from Etsy and I always go by the rating of the shop, of the seller. And every person that I've purchased my dolls from have had amazing ratings. And um, Emerald and Lisa, I, I don't really know about them. I've caught some weird stuff. I had a weird experience with Emerald, but that is when my logical mind, my skeptic mind, mind comes out again. Cause you guys know I'm a huge skeptic, but I'm a huge believer and I've experienced stuff for myself. So I am a huge believer, but I think what I'm more skeptical of are the stories surrounding these haunted objects. Like, is she really a nine-year-old spirit? Does she really like to talk? You know, and I think I need to stop just, I, but it's in the paranormal. I think it's good to be skeptic. You know, you don't just go into a haunted location and think everything is paranormal. You know, it's, you should have that logical explanation always going on in your head. Like, no, maybe it was this, maybe it was that, or like, please. And I think with haunted items, I need to be more open to, okay. You know, like I can't be like, was she really a nine-year-old spirit? I gotta be like, okay, yeah, she's a nine-year-old spirit. She's a nine-year-old spirit. Let's see when she comes through. We're gonna, you know, talk about this, talk about that. She's gonna do this, she's gonna do that. It's gonna be amazing, you know? And I need to start putting that out there rather than being like, oh God, I hope it's haunted. Like, I hope she's haunted. I hope, you know, you know what I mean? And I think that has been low key my attitude. And you guys know that I'm all into manifestation. So manifestation is really making me wake up <laughs> and realize about everything. 
every part of my life and how I should be thinking and going into things. But I think it's, like I've said, I think it's super healthy to be a skeptic. Even though I have had the craziest, craziest experiences and I know the paranormal is real because I've witnessed it myself. But I am going to tell you about some weird things. Like I said, I definitely feel the presence. I definitely feel like I'm being watched. I feel like she's listening to me right now, the spirit. And you know, they also say with haunted items, you gotta kind of work your way into it. Be slow. Sometimes it takes six months, I've read. It takes like six months to really get activity out of a haunted doll or anything. So, I mean, I'm not giving up, obviously. I just need to stop with that mindset, you guys know. So about a month ago, I was having, I've been having the weirdest dreams lately and I don't really pay attention to dreams anymore. I kind of, my dreams are all over the place. Like lately I've been dreaming about NSYNC, the Backstreet Boys. I went into sleep paralysis last night, or not last night, it was like two nights ago when I was dreaming about the Backstreet Boys. I'll get into that in a second. It was bizarre. I just don't really pay attention to dreams anymore. If something happens, maybe I'll look it up and look for the symbolism of it. And you know, it does mean certain things, but if something is so bizarre in the dream, I'm just like, okay. But if it's something so specific and you know that it means something symbolic, you know what I mean? Then yeah, I'll look it up and be like, okay, that makes sense. So I had, a few dreams about a month ago and it's very blurry but I remember there was this little girl and she looked she was a spirit I mean no she wasn't a spirit I guess she was a spirit I think she was a spirit in the dream she looked like Jem she looked like she was nine years old and she looked like she was wearing an outfit very similar to what Jem is wearing and she was when I in the dream she was standing at the foot of my bed and just looking at me. So I know everyone's gonna be like, oh my God, Brittany, like, bleh, like, are you an idiot? That has to be some psychic dream. You were seeing the spirit of Jem. But immediately I'm just like, I don't know. I think I was just so focused on Jem and the spirit of Jem that I just think I made her up in my head and she was standing at the foot of my bed and she didn't say anything to me. She just looked at me. She was standing at the foot of my bed and just staring at me. Now, the other night, I had a dream about the Backstreet Boys because I have been on this, I've always been obsessed with Backstreet Boys and NSYNC, you know, back when they were huge. But lately, I just really, really, especially NSYNC, I've been on an NSYNC journey. I've just been obsessed with NSYNC and I've been having so many dreams about NSYNC. But this one was about Backstreet Boys. And basically, I was with the Backstreet Boys, there was aliens, and the sky was this really bright green. Like it just, you know when it's in the, like the alien movies, the sky is just green and it's so bright. That's, I don't know what was going on. Anyways, I woke up and I couldn't move, but I, st I was in my bedroom and I could still see that green sky. Like it was in my bedroom. And I knew that the aliens and the Backstreet Boys were outside of my bedroom window. And I heard something growling. And I remember in that moment, I was like, what the crow sound? <laughs> what the crow sound is going on? And I just remember, I was so scared. Like my heart was racing. I could not move. It wasn't for long though. I think I was really about to go into it. And this has happened to me before. Remember that pear eating freak? If you remember that stalker girl? In my dream I had, it was like sleep paralysis. I was almost in it, but I kind of snapped myself out of it and that's what happened. Check out that video, this pear eating freak <laughs> stalker dream that I had that I was like on the, like, the border of sleep paralysis. That was messed up. But for this dream, it was also like that and I knew I was about to go into it because I was frozen, my heart was pounding. I was thinking, like all, all I was doing was moving my eyes around. I could see the green light and I knew the Backstreet Boys were outside of my, or were outside my window and I knew aliens were as well. <laughs> and I think all this alien talk, the men in black, the women in the sunglasses, I think it's just all in my head and you know, listening to Backstreet Boys, listening to NSYNC and it just formed this crazy dream. And then I heard growling, which was really messed up. And I was in my room, like I was awake but it was still going on. So it was definitely sleep paralysis, but then I kind of just snapped myself out of it. I'm good at that. That's like a weird talent that I have. I can just snap right out. 
of sleep paralysis. Like I'm about to go in, I'm in it, and I'm about to go in even more, but whoosh, I get taken out of it. It's weird. Let me know if that happens to you. I don't know. But that's pretty much it with Jen. Ever since I took her on that investigation with me, she has been in my bedroom. So it makes, okay, okay, it makes sense. It does, but there we go again. I'm just like, yeah, but like, you know, maybe I just was eating cheese or something before bed. Like, that's just immediately where I go to, but it makes sense. It's weird. I think at nighttime when I'm in bed, I feel kind of off, like something is around me, but I never think it's gem. A part of me is like, oh, maybe it is, but then I'm like, ah, oh, I think I got spirit guides. Because I'm always talking to my spirit guides. I'm always talking to my angels. I'm talking to everybody, so I think everybody's just watching. But, you know, sometimes I hear, it sounds like someone's almost like creaking up to my bed. I, I don't, I don't know. That's all I'm going to say. Anyways, well, then I'll, let's grab Jim. Hey, queen. Let's just actually do something really fast. Actually, this would be a good thumbnail. <gasps> Update on my haunted doll. What you don't want to hear. <laughs> you know how we have to be like so dramatic in the thumbnails? Oh my dear lord. I don't know. I'll figure out a thumbnail. There's just, there's definitely a vibe with her. Hi. Imagine her head turned to the camera. Like that's the stuff I want to happen. Like exorcist stuff. I want her head to flip around like crazy. I gotta put that out there. Just really believe that could happen in the paranormal. Stop putting up these blockages. But uh, anyways, I'll see you guys in the next one. Sweet dreams. Like, it literally looks like she's looking into your soul. Gem. The spirit of Gem. I just got chills. Okay, it's still recording. <laughs> I might leave this in. I don't know. We'll see. The spirit of Gem. If there's anybody, or no, not if there's anybody, because I know the spirit of Gem. The nine-year-old girl, if there is a nine-year-old girl who would like to speak with me or give me any kind of sign, Jem, I know that you're here. I've talked to you so many times. Can you please, just please let me know that you are here. Do you wanna to touch my hair? Was that you who I saw in my dream? My dreams? And guys, as I, as I am filming this, <laughs> let me see what time it is. Because I always do that. It's 1.29 a.m. So it is. It's not dead time. It's not the witching hour, the devil's hour. But you don't always have to do everything at 3 a.m. You know, that's just the time where they say the veil is the thinnest between our world and the spirit world, you know, but you don't always have to do that. You can investigate at nine in the morning if you want, you know, but it definitely sets the mood to do it at night. I definitely got chills from her looking at you guys in the camera. This will continue. Like you guys will see more of Gem, of course, and I'll probably try to do more experiments and see. But um, but um, anyways, I'll go for real now. I'm sorry. Oh my God, my camera just said 11, 11. I've been seeing so many 11, 11s. I've been seeing so many fours. I've also been seeing Eiffel Towers everywhere, which um is a huge symbolic thing for me. I don't know what this is. Anyways. Weird. Was that gem then? 11 11. Oh, I gotta stop this. And I'm back. Sorry, my camera was about to go off, but uh, 
But I'm gonna go for real now. Sorry about that. I'll see you guys in the next one. Two more videos left with this iconic background and then we're moving on to another set. So uh, see you guys in the next one. Leave your comments down below. Give this video a like. Subscribe if you haven't yet. I upload every single week. And um, follow me on social media. Instagram and Twitter. I'll see you guys later.